shall move on to the word of god we shall go to deuteronomy chapter 10 and we shall read verses 12 13 and 20 three verses i love to read to you deuteronomy chapter 10 verses 12 13 and 20 verse 12 and now israel now israel what that the lord thy god require of thee but to fear the lord thy god to walk all in his ways and to love him and to serve the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul to keep the commandments of the lord and his statutes which i command thee uh, this day for thy good verse 20 thou shalt fear the lord thy god uh, him shall thou serve and to him shall thou cleave and swear by his name the captain for this morning this evening meditation is what that god requires of you what god requires of you deuteronomy means in latin vulgate deuteronimum deuteronimum when we say vulgate vulgate is the principal latin version of the bible the bible was the old testament was in hebrew and the new testament was in greek later in the 4th century it was translated by one jerome a saint into latin that bible is generally called the vulgate latin vulgate and latin vulgate is the official bible of the roman catholic church and that is uh, in that bible the latin word is deuteronimum deuteronimum this concept comes from the greek version the septuagint that's called the septuagint from hebrew later it was translated into greek even before jesus was born jesus christ was using that bible uh, the septuagint the apostles were using that translation that's called the septuagint that's the greek bible in the greek bible also the word used is Uh, the same sense deuteronomy uh, in greek it is called uh, mishne mishne what do you mean by mishne the word mishne means it is an iteration iteration means uh, duplicating saying it again iterate it it is said again what is given in the laws in the book of exodus in the book of leviticus and also a part of numbers what is given by the lord moses repeats it moses repeats it he says that for the second time deuteronomy deuteronomy in tamil uba akamam uba akamam that's a beautiful book i tell you an important thing in the new testament especially in the gospel a few old testament passages jesus quoted a few old testament passages jesus quoted but the maximum the maximum the maximum old testament out of all 66 books the maximum quotation jesus cited is from the book of deuteronomy shall we clap our hands and worship the lord clap your hands and worship the lord deuteronomy is such a beautiful book and i tell you something very interesting in the events of history at the time of jesus temptation by the devil when he finishes his fasting three temptations came to jesus you all know very well for all three temptations jesus 
answer the devil back from the scriptures from the torah it will surprise to know jesus answered the devil for all his three temptations only from deuteronomy once again shall we clap our hands and worship the lord so deuteronomy is such a i think jesus loved deuteronomy more there are quotations from book of prophets there are quotations from psalms there are quotations from other books of torah but the maximum quotation given was from deuteronomy when i was studying the book of deuteronomy some time back it really fascinated me it really fascinated me as i was studying the book of deuteronomy to my pleasant surprise i found repeatedly one phrase lord thy god un devana ye karta un devana ye karta vare yaar unle nobody else un devana ye karta un devana ye karta lord your god lord your god lord your god it is very much repeated in the deuteronomy then i wanted to know so i was able to find out to my present surprise that phrase the lord your god un devana ke karte ungal devana ke karte that phrase appears 304 times in the bible the lord your god that phrase appears if you want you can make a note of it it appears 304 times in the bible out of 304 times to your pleasant surprise 233 times it appears only in deuteronomy once again shall we clap our hands and worship the lord the lord your god the lord your god the lord your god and another small calculation i made 36 chapters in 36 chapters nearly 233 times 233 times in 36 chapters nearly more than nine times in every chapter the phrase the lord your god the lord your god the lord your god un devana ye karta un devana ye karta so i understand this book of deuteronomy it's a very 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 a very personal message once again given to the people of god before they could possess the promised land now we are on the verge of possessing the promised land to inherit heaven we are on the verge of possessing this promised land either by death or by his rapture and before we could possess the promised land to prepare us to possess the promised land a meditation on deuteronomy is very very useful nam ellar vaakuthatham panna patta desathai sudandarikkira and vilimbula nindu kondirukkom maranam aanalum seri kattrude rahasya varugai aanalum seri namakkaga vaakuthatham panna patta sudandarathai nam sudandarikkira and vilimbula nindu kondirukkoru priyamanavarle namai aayathapaduthigira and vilimbula nirkkira namai aayathapaduthigira oru nalla puthagam deuteronomy ubhagamam in the book of deuteronomy chapter 10 verses 12 13 and 30 it's deuteronomy in nutshell the whole book of deuteronomy if i put it in a nutshell it is chapter 10 verses 12 13 and 20 so we read in these three verses what god expects from you people what god expects from you people from us nothing more than this so we shall read those verses again verse uh, 10 the lord says and now is read what that the lord thy god require of you after all, what that he requires of you and we read number 1 to fear the lord your god to fear the lord you are he doesn't require anything more than that just fear him fear means not getting scared of him as if you are seeing a devil as if you are seeing a ghost it is not getting scared of him it is giving the reverence to him it is giving the due to him he is worthy of all our honor he is worthy of all our praise he is worthy of all our uh, glory give that reverence to him what is worthy to him what is due to him 
the fear of the lord you can exhibit through your implicit obedience that shows what is the respect you give to him just imagine you are working in an office the situation just i want to bring it to your mind you are working in an office you are just finishing the work you are working on a computer you just want to save the file you just want to finish the work your friend comes there your friend says hey come man we'll go for a coffee hey wait wait i'll come you'll be finishing the work. wait wait i'll come you won't be hurry through if your friend is calling you we'll go for a cup of coffee hey wait man i'll finish it and come now you are officer he calls you hey yuvraj please come for a minute Sir, sir, I just say the file and come. Your tone will be different. You will not be working on it. You'll just save the file, and you will answer the officer. Now the director has come. He comes and say, uh, "Mr. Everett, yes, sir." What? You are giving the duty to him. If you really fear him, this would be your response to him. He will not say, "I'll finish the work and come." you will not say i'll save the file and come you say yes sir if he is your lord he is your god what is your fear that you can measure the way that you respond to his commands how you re- react to his presence what the god requires of you after all fear the lord your god he is your god The Lord thy God, Yahweh is your God. So give that reverence due to Him in all your situation. So number one, that's all. He's not expecting anything from us. It's not just our tithes. It's not just our offerings. Everything is only the reflection of our fear to Him, as our reverence to Him. He doesn't require it. With all humility, I tell you, it's not even for His servants. he will take care of his servants what he requires of you the reverence due to him number 1 and number 2 to walk in all his ways number 2 what does he require of you to walk in all his ways there are two ways there is a way which seems good unto me there is a way which seems good unto me and a romba nalladun theriyira oru vali irukku there is another way that is the way of god how do i know this is the way of god i could see jesus walk before me i could see peter john james walk before me i could see paul walked before me i could see uh william carey walk before me Sadhu Sundar Singh walked before me. I could see Pastor Sundar walk before me. I could see the way the saints have walked before me. That is called the path. They have carved the path for me. The path, the English word, is from our Tamil. The word path in English is from our Tamil word padai, padai. What does mean padai? Pada comes from padam, padam from our foot, because the feet of the saints have trodden, because the feet of the saints have trodden on that way. That path is formed. That path is formed. That path is formed. I want to walk in that. How do I know that is the way of God? Because Jesus walked in that way. How do I know that is the way of God? Because Peter, John, James walked in the way. how do i know that is the way of god saints of the ages have walked in that way they have formed the path the path has been created the path has been created because of their feet avanga paadam pattu 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 and the path they uruvaite i want to walk in that path here it says to walk in all his ways there is a ministry his way there is a business his way but it's a family life his ways bringing up children his ways in all not only in ministry it is a, a devil's doctrine a church 
is different from personal life. Church, oh, the Bible is different from personal life. No. In all your ways. In all your ways. In your secular education, his ways. You want to bring up in a particular stream of life, his ways. In everything what you do, in everything what you plan to do, I tell you there are two ways. One is pleasing to you. There are ways which seem good unto men. The end thereof is death. Be careful. If you believe the Bible, believe this. Let me repeat it. If you believe the Bible, you believe this. There are ways which seem good unto men. And the end thereof is death. Manishan ki chemeya ito ndikira baligal undi mudivo marana. But the ways of God. It's very simple. Saints have gone before in this way. This is how they have learned the Bible. This is how they have taught the Bible. The very sad thing, we decorate, we paint, we whitewash the sepulchres of the saints and we say they are our forefathers and the evil, you don't walk in their ways. It is better that, say for example, you say Pastor Sundaram is a saint. But you don't want to follow what he taught us. You want to have a different way. Logically, logically, when you are when you are correct, you must be able to say what Pastor Sundaram taught was wrong. What I teach is right. Pastor Sundaram, in his foolishness, he said, "Oh, do this, don't do that. It's all rubbish." I am what I am teaching is the right one. It's okay. But you say he is a saint and you don't follow him. You say Paul is a saint and you don't want to follow him. You get my point? You get my point? You say Paul is a saint. He is an apostle sent by God. And what he has written I don't want to follow. What God requires of you after all? It's very simple. Just to walk in all his ways, in every situation, in your dress, in your uh, adornment, whatever you do, just fo follow wh where the saints have gone. My dear brother, my dear sister, so number one, to fear the Lord thy God. Number two, walk in all his ways. And number three, what that he wants us to do? To love him. To love him. The phrase that comes afterwards, with all your heart and with all your soul, that is for the point number three and also for point number four. So point number three, what is that God requires of us? What is that God demands from us? To love him with all our heart, with all our soul. The word love him, love him, love him in the Bible is a very beautiful word. The love in the Bible is a dynamic verb. It's not a static verb. There are verbs which are called dynamic verbs. I'm not teaching you English, but this will help you understand the word love. I cannot say to somebody, I love you and I love you, I love you, and I don't do anything for him. It's, 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 a, it's simply rubbish. I love you, I love you. What does it mean? I love a person. In what way that benefits him? I just tell Vanas, Vanas, I love you, Vanas, I love you, Vanas, I love you, Vanas. How does it help him? A husband tells his wife, Oh, really, I love you. My darling, I love you. What's the use of that love? So, love can never be static. You cannot love a person doing nothing for that person. You tell your wife hundred times, or you tell your husband thousand times, Darling, I love you, darling, I love you. See, so you don't believe, really, I love you. Please bear with me for using this word. That's absolute nonsense. Nonsense means it makes no sense. The word nonsense, I'm not uh, chiding you with this word, 
But the word nonsense means it makes no sense. There's no sense in it. It is to tell someone, I really love you. I really love you. Well, how much I love you, no? The son tells the mother, Mom, Mommy, you don't know really I love you, Mommy. What is nonsense? Nonsense means no sense. I have told you this example many a time. A disciple went to a Guruji. He told the Guruji, 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 really I love you very much. Really I love you very much. Guruji said, no, you don't love me. No, no, Guruji, really I love you. He said, no, you don't love me. Guruji, I don't know how to tell you, but you, you believe or not, I really love you, Guruji. Second time he said, no, you don't love me. The disciple broke. I don't know how to convince you. Guruji, really I love you, Guruji. So Guruji said, Okay, Shishya, tell me what I need now. Tell me what I need now. He said, Guruji, how do I know what you need? How do I know what you need? So Guruji said, How can you love me when you don't know what I need? How can you love me when you don't know what I need? Husbands, you cannot love your wives when you don't know what they need. Why is you cannot love your husband when you don't know what they need? How can you love them? So what is love after all? Doing good to that person. Willing to give something for that person. That is the real love. That is the real love. Being willing even to give your life. I love you, Lord. Pardon. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. What's the use of that love? Unless you are willing to give something for the Lord. And the greatest love. Two things. If you love a person. Children, I tell you. If you love your parents, you will obey them. You will obey them. If you love your pastor, you will obey him. If you love the Lord, you will obey Him. You will obey His commandments. You cannot tell the Lord, Lord, I love you, I love you, and you forfeit from obeying Him. You forfeit from obeying Him. If you love the Lord, you should obey Him. Obey His commandments. Not only the written word, even the Holy Spirit speaks to you. You must be willing to obey. You must be willing to obey. If he tells me, go there, I must be willing to go there. When he was healing the person, the legion, person, the person possessed with legions of demons, the Lord said, go from here, you go. When all the countrymen come and say, hey, go, leave this place, leave this place. I got power, I don't mind, go. I don't do anything on my own. I do what the Lord tells me. I do what the Lord tells me. The Lord tells me, leave, I leave. My dear brother, my dear sister, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. If you really love the Lord, you'd be willing to do what He wants. One is, Obeying his commandments. Number two, loving the Lord. Willing to give a life for him. Willing to give a life for him. Willing to give everything that belongs to you for you. Everything what we have got is what we have received from him. Everything what we have got is everything what we have received from him. There's a beautiful uh, missionary song we used to sing. Selvam. Kalvi, Purul, Selva, Ella work. Ella work under God. My Kalvi, my Selva, my Purul, everything what He has given me, my education, my wealth, and my possession, everything is from what He has given. So everything is for Him. I am willing to give. I am willing to give. So there are two things the sign of love. One is 
obeying his commandments number two willing to give anything and everything for him for that love in tamil we use different words a sei virupo etc etc like that in greek also there are many words and mostly three words are very much used one is eros that's why we got a eros theater and that the word eros is almost equivalent to our tamil kadal it is a type of a love between a man and a woman a type of a a, a bonding a love between man and a woman maybe husband and wife or otherwise that's called eros what we can call as kadal and the next love is phylos phylos is i love something because it pleases me because it benefits me i love something because it pleases me it benefits me i love this child because this child brings happiness to me i don't love this child this child is a pain on my neck so my love is with respect to the recipient this person pleases me i love him i don't love this person because he doesn't please me i love mathematics mathematics is very interesting it pleases me it gives joy to me i love oh i don't like that subject why no it's boring so it doesn't give me happiness so i don't love so my love is that philos from that only we get philomen philippians philos philosophy philosophy sophie means beauty or absolute philosophy means loving beauty loving absolute that is philosophy but there is one love that is called agapeus that word agapeus i love this boy he is good or bad i love this boy he is good or bad my love to these children depend doesn't depend upon who they are it doesn't depend upon who they are my nature is to love them my nature is to love them that is the love of god so now just apply this i love god because he gives me i love god because he answers my prayer but the real love i love god even if he doesn't answer my prayer i love god even if he doesn't give me i love god even if i don't get what i want i love god even if i have to go through the fire i love god even if i am thrown into the den of lions i love god my nature is to love god my nature is to love god my loving god doesn't depend upon what god does to me what god doesn't do to me let me repeat it that's a real love i love god first he loved me now i love him he loved me with no respect to who i am even when i was his enemy he loved me and he has saved me now i love him the love that was in god that love is shed abroad in my heart when i received the holy spirit the love that was in god He shed abroad in my heart when I received the Holy Spirit. So whether God is good to me or not, I love God. Whether God answers my prayer or not, I love God. Whether God leads me in the path of roses or He leads me in the path of thorns, whatever He does, He would do it for my good. He would be doing it for my good. Maybe for some good learning. my dear brother my dear sister what is it he requires of you just simple things just simple thing fear him walk in his ways and love him with all your heart with all your soul and number four what is it he wants us to do it's very simple number four to serve the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul to serve the lord to serve the lord is not uh, doing this type of a uh, ministerial work in the church uh, doing in the helping in the general arrangement or 
volunteering to the media ministry or some other work. Serving the Lord, it doesn't mean working in a church office. Serving the Lord doesn't mean doing the work of an evangelist or a pastor or an apostle. So what does it mean by serving the Lord? Serving the Lord is worship. We say Sunday morning service, Sunday evening service, worship. In a better way, serving the Lord is be his servant, be his slave. The word slave or the servant used in the, New, in the Bible is equivalent to a bond servant, a slave. Be willing to be a slave. Whatever he says, I will do this, I won't do that. I will do this, I won't do that. No, no, I won't do that. You are not a servant. A servant cannot have a choice. I will do this, I won't do that. I want to serve him. I want to pay, the, pay a service to him. Whatever he does, whatever he wants me to do, I am willing to do. That is, serve the Lord. Be a slave to him. Totally committed to him. What the Lord requires of it is very simple. Lord, I am thy servant. If you tell me, go, I will go. If you tell me, don't go, I don't go. I am at your service. I am at your service. And when you serve the Lord, very, very important, here it is said, serve the Lord, with all your heart, with all your soul. I can add with all your mind. With all your mind. With all your strength. When you want to serve the Lord, when you want to love the Lord, the four things are very important. With all your heart. That speaks about your emotion. Very joyfully, you must have an emotion. Emotion attached to it. You are very joyful to serve the Lord. It gives a joy to you to serve the Lord. Your mind, your thought process, your mindedness, your sindai. I am serving the Lord. You must have that thought process. With all your strength, with your full strength you should serve the Lord. Not in a leisurely way. The Bible says, Cursed is he that doeth the work of the Lord slothfully. Cursed is he. Robert Simon will be cursed if I do the work of the Lord in a slothful way. If I do the work of the Lord in a slothful way. I can't do it. Last night, maybe 11.30, a little before 12, I saw a message from one of the believers. I attended. I talked to the person, what was the need? Around 12 o'clock, another servant of God phoned me. Morning I should get up early so that I have to get ready for the morning service. But I am a servant. I cannot do it slothfully. My dear brother, my dear sister, especially those who are <coughs> the Carmel work workforce, if you do the work of the Lord in a slothful way, The Bible says, cursed is that person. So that must be a commitment of totality. Be willing to serve the Lord with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your strength. Be a servant to Him. Whatever the mission He gives you, you must have a passion for that mission the Lord gives you. My dear brother, my dear sister, The Bible, the, in the world they say a good boatsman 
He never sleeps on his oar. A good boatsman, nalla padagu otrave. He cannot sleep on his oar. He has to reach the other shore. Akkere ki poi aahanu. He cannot sleep in between. Many challenges. I encourage you, when you want to serve the Lord, you must be able to serve Him wholeheartedly. Or better you don't serve Him. When you serve the Lord, serve the Lord wholeheartedly. If you are not willing to serve the Lord wholeheartedly, it's better that you don't serve Him. He that serves the Lord in a slothful way, cursed is He. So you must have a heart, a bubbling heart, to serve the Lord. Glory be to the Lord's holy name. My dear brother, my dear sister, there will be challenging situations, difficult situations in our lives, very difficult situations. With all of our difficulties, what does He require of us? To fear Him, to walk in His ways, to love Him and to serve Him with all of our hearts. And number five, that we read in verse 13. Number five, we read that in verse 13. What the Lord requires of us to keep the commandments of the Lord and His statutes, which I command thee this day for your good. Number five, we have to obey the Lord to do His commandments, to keep His commandments, the Ten Commandments and the other statutes, precepts, there are different words used. They've got different meanings. I don't want to get into that and just obey His word. Obey His commandments. If the Bible says honor your parents, honor your parents. If the Bible says don't have a, a a statue, an image, don't have it. The Bible says, don't lie, don't lie. What the Lord requires of you, after all, number five, to keep his commandments, his statutes, his laws, his precepts, just keep them. If you don't keep those things, what did you want to keep? We don't want to obey the Bible, what is it you want to obey? We don't want to follow the Bible, what is it you want to follow? Just think for a minute. You don't want to obey the Bible. You don't want to follow the Bible. If you don't want to obey the Bible, if you don't want to follow the Bible, what is it you want to do? Think for a minute. My dear brother, my dear sister. Obey His commandments. His commandments. And number six. Now we shall move on to verse 20. Please move on to verse 20. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God that we have seen. Him shall thou serve. That also we have seen. And number six. And to him shall thou cleave. To him shall thou cleave. Number six, what the Lord requires of us. To cleave unto him. Follow closely with him. Let come what may. God and I are one. This cleaving is what we read in the book of Genesis. The Lord says the husband will leave the father and mother and cleave to his wife. No more they are twine but one. Likewise, when you cleave to the Lord, when you cleave to the Lord, no more you are twine but one. No more you are twine but one. You are cleaving to the Lord. You are cleaving to the Lord. You have become one with the Lord. That's what Paul says. We become the bone of his bones. We become the flesh of his flesh. We become the blood of his blood. I'm a new creation. The blood in me is the blood of Jesus. I am washed by the blood of Jesus. I am bought by the blood of Jesus. I am cleaving to Jesus. 
I am cleaving to Jesus. I become one with Jesus. Whatever the situation may be. I am leaving. I am uh, I am cleaving. Leaning upon Jesus. There is a beautiful verse. I love that verse very much. I, I think it is in uh, Songs of Solomon chapter 8 verse 5. Songs of Solomon chapter 8 verse 5. Who is this? Who is this? That comes up in the wilderness. That comes up from the wilderness. From where it comes? Comes up from the wilderness. Dry place. Where there is nothing good found. From a dry place. From a wilderness. She is coming up from the wilderness. Hey, who is this? Coming up from the wilderness. From the wilderness that speaks about difficult situations, dry situations, from where nothing good is come. A very lonely place. Coming up. Coming up from the wilderness. Who is this? Coming up from the wilderness. But how does she come up? How does she come up from the wilderness? The Bible says, leaning upon the bosom of her beloved. The Nasir in Marbil signed the very evil yar. The Nasir in Marbil signed the very evil yar. Who is this? Panandaratil. A Nasir Marbil signed the very Oh, what a beautiful expression. I love that very much. Whatever my situation may be. Leaning upon his bosom. Cleaving to the Lord. Cleaving to the Lord. My dear brother, my dear sister, cleaving to the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. I cleave upon Him. Before I conclude, take a decision. What did He request of you? What did He request of us? Just to fear Him, to walk in His ways, to love Him, to obey His commandments. What does He request of us? If He is your God, cleave unto Him. Cleave unto Him. Our Ungal Deva Nana, or Nalla Patikonga. Or Nalla Patikonga. In Tamil, we use that word, Korangapudi. Korangapudi. You know what's Kwarangapudi? You may you can always see a cat, a cat carrying the kitten by its uh, by biting. It will carry its young one. But when you see a monkey, the monkey will jump from this branch to that branch, this mountain, this uh, tree to that tree, or fall from that roof down. It will not carry the young one. The young monkey will cleave to the mother. It will cleave to the mother. That is the Kwarangapudi. You must have a Kwarangapudi of God. Whatever let God do, I will cleave to Him. I will cleave to Him. My dear brother, my dear sister, whatever the Lord could do, I want to cleave to Him. I will cleave to Him. Take a decision today. Whatever my situation may be, whatever the path in which the Lord would lead me, I will cleave to him. I will cleave to him. And finally, number seven. Number seven. In verse 20 we read. This is very, very important. I want to explain that. To swear by his name. To swear by his name. Hey, can we give promise? How can we say that swearing by his name? Oh, Jesus said we should not swear by the name of God. This phrase is entirely different from that. It's not just swearing in the name of God. It was a phrase. I say this, I promise this in honor of the king. I 
promised this in the honor of the king. It literally means signifies binding themselves by his authority, acknowledging his supremacy, and devoting themselves to his glory and service alone. I promise in the name, uh, I promise in his name. He is my authority. He is my supremo. I do it in his name. The final thing, whatever you do, do it in the name of Jesus. When I say I do it in the name of Jesus, he has given me the right to do it. I do it in his name, not in my own name. So to swear by his name literally means give him the honor, the supremacy, accept him as he is your king. Why do you do like this? God has said. Why don't you do like this? God has said. Everything. So every time should you give the statement because God has said. Whatever you do it, do it in the name of Jesus. It means every time do we confess, I do it in the name of Jesus, I do it in the name of Jesus. If I eat, I eat in the name of Jesus. No, it doesn't mean that you have to confess every time. Even if you do it, it's not wrong. But what does it actually mean? He is my king. He is supreme. His word is supreme. His authority. He is the supremo. He is the supremo. There is no one above him. There is no one above him. My dear brother, my dear sister. I love everybody. I respect everybody. I honor everybody, but no one is above him. No one is above him. I honor authorities, but he is the supremo. If I put it in today's word, Tala. Our than Tala. Yes, and Allah, our Bella Nasir. Our Bella Nasir. He is the Tala. My dear brother, my dear sister, these are the only seven things he requires of us. When I say these are the seven things he requires of us, do you see the whole Bible, both the New Testament and the Old Testament, all the words of Jesus, all the apostolic teachings, everything you could see, it comprised within this. Everything you could see that is comprised Within this, my dear brother, my dear sister, the Spirit of the Lord has spoken to you. I feel as if the whole Bible is taught this evening. The whole Bible is taught in this evening. In the book of Deuteronomy. It's a very powerful book. In the book of Deuteronomy, after all, after all, what God requests of you, but these seven things. To fear Him. To walk in His ways. To love Him. To keep all His commandments. To cleave unto Him. To keep Him as your supreme. Does God require anything more than this? Shall we just stand to our feet?